folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Shipwrights of the North Sea. It's a game that is put out by Garp Hill uh, Games, and uh, the designer is Shem Phillips. And uh, it is a Viking game, which already kind of piques my interest. They also have a game out there called Raiders of the North Sea, which is a much more confrontational game. This is has a little bit more of a Euro-style feel, resource management, hand management, that type of thing, uh, just to generate points. So uh, let's get down to the table. We'll take a look at it. We'll see what you think. In Shipwrights of the North Sea, each player is taking on the role of a chieftain of his village who is trying to construct boats. Boats are going to be giving you uh, victory points at the end of the game. Whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner. But the end of the game is triggered by someone building their fourth ship. And it is possible for you to build two ships in one turn, so you can go over four ships if that's possible. But Generally speaking, at the end of the game, it's whoever has the most points wins. Now, there are uh, this is a card-driven game, and there are five different kinds of cards in the deck. First of all, there are ships. Now, ships are going to provide probably the bulk of your victory points. There are also going to be two different kinds of ships. There are civilian ships and then military ships, denoted by the red and blue boxes there. And then the ships are going to give you some type of either benefit or detriment to your village. For example, this one right here, the NAR, uh, lowers the storage capacity of your mill by two. This one lowers how many villagers will come to work in your village uh, by one throughout the course of the game. At the bottom of the deck, at the bottom of the card rather, you have, first of all, the kinds of craftsmen that you need in order to build this ship. And then you also have the number of resources that are necessary in order to build this ship. You also have uh, buildings that you're going to be building into your village. For example, the market hall here, uh, it costs eight gold and three workers to build it. And then you, you receive victory points equal to the mill's capacity minus eight. You also have what are called craftsmen, which have a red background, and they give uh, the kinds of ship that they're good at making, and so in, uh, you have to have these in order to build ships. We'll get to that in just a few moments. You also have townsfolk. Townsfolk will allow you to do some certain kind of special ability on your turn by playing the card. For example, the watchman here says you cannot be attacked until your next turn. Tools will usually give you some kind of ability that you don't have to uh, use a certain kind of resource to build a ship as long as you have this tool in effect. The game is split up into a variable amount of days or rounds and each day or round is split up into, an, into three phases. A morning phase where you plan for the day, an afternoon phase where you work or carry out your different actions, and then an evening phase where you rest and basically prepare your board for the next day. In the morning phase is where cards will be given out to each of the players, and it's done so in a drafting style where the first player will draw a number of cards equal to the number of players plus one. So in this case, five cards are drawn. He chooses one and passes the rest to the second player and so forth and so on. That is carried out three times so that each player has three cards in their hand to begin the turn. So on my first turn here, I have the trade cart, a Drakkar, and a blacksmith in my hand. So maybe I want to first of all play this trade cart. Now what this does is um, I pay four money for it. So I use uh, the gold that is tracked here. You, everybody starts with five gold. And so I use four gold. I place my cart right down here. And it states that I take one of each of the resources and place them on the cart. And then whenever I am buying a certain resource, for example, if I buy wool, then I will be able to take this wool and add it to my uh, mill. And then once all the uh, goods are gone from the trade cart, it goes away. And then next, I will take my Drakkar and place it into workshop A, which means that I am beginning construction on it. And then finally, I'm going to take my blacksmith, 
And even though I don't need them here, I am going to place it down here. Now, it's important to note here that there are only room for four craftsmen in your village. So, uh, since I don't need the blacksmith for this particular boat, maybe the next boat I look for will need a blacksmith and I'll be able to use him on that one. Now, other things that you can do on your turn, for example, I bought a tool, I, a, I uh, hired a craftsman, I began building a boat. Those were three of the things. Um, I can also uh, construct a building, even, uh, but I didn't have any buildings in my hand. I could buy goods. Now, buying goods means that you're going to purchase from the market that is represented by the top card of the draw deck. So whenever cards are drawn, you'll see that the market will change throughout the course of the game. But in order to purchase from the market, I have to use two of my villagers and two gold if I had it, and then I'd be able to purchase one of those ribbons worth of goods. So I could use two men and two gold to purchase one wood or two wool or three uh, iron, but I could not purchase all of them. And then once my turn is over, the next person takes his turn and so forth and so on. And then once everybody has taken their turn, we go into the evening phase, which is where we're going to be, first of all, getting gold for the number of people in our village. So I would gain three gold. And then I also get another person comes to my village. Uh, and then we check to see if we are within our capacity for our mill. So we can have no more than eight goods in our mill. I only have two, so we're okay. And then this player marker will shift to the next person. He will then draw five cards, um, which would then begin the morning phase of the next day. And that is how the game progresses until one person has built his fourth ship and then points are accumulated both from ships, any buildings that you have purchased, and also any bonuses. For example, whoever has the most military power will get a bonus three points at the end of the game. And whoever has the most points is the winner. Also available for you is the Townsfolk expansion, which basically gives you another thing that you can do with your workers during the course of your turn. For example, uh, here, you can send a worker here to build a, a ship using a different, craftsman, a, a different craftsman that is called for on the ship. So if you don't have a blacksmith and you need a blacksmith, but you have a weaver, but a weaver isn't called for on the ship, you can use the weaver instead of the craftsman. Here, you can send a worker to uh, discard one card and get two gold, two cards and get three gold, or three cards and get five gold. Here, you can send a worker out here to basically refresh the market like so. And if you do that, you get a, a good of your choice. You can send a worker here to take all of the workers back into your village, whoever the current player is. And then here, you can send a worker to either make somebody else uh, discard a uh, boat card or a craftsman card from their tableau, or you can take one of these shields and put them on one of those two different cards in your tableau, meaning that that ship or that craftsman is protected from attacks specifically. So that is Shipwrights of the North Sea by Garp Hill Games. And it is a very Euro style strategic game, uh, but it does have a little bit of theme sprinkled in throughout. So it is okay on that front. It's not thematically driven, don't get me wrong, because basically you're just building boats and managing resources in order to build those boats, using the cards in your hands to be a little bit of an annoyance to your people or to, to your opponents rather, or to help your own village out a little bit. I think it's probably plays, I think it probably plays a little bit longer than I would like it to. Uh, it has a definite hardcore a look of the draw mechanic into it, especially the way the rules are written in that the first person grabs five cards uh, or, you know, number of players plus one number of cards and gets first pick. And then the second person gets first pick and, and so forth and so on. Then he draws another group of cards and he gets first pick again. And he does that three times. So one of the things that we've done to kind of aid with that pretty huge uh, luck of the draw bonus and getting the first pick every single 
uh, every single time on that one turn that you go. Um, we've kind of done it where we each draw, kind of like a normal drafting, where we each draw uh, the same number of cards, and then we pass around until we've all drafted three cards, and then we're we're ready to go. The card play, building your ships, and all that kind of stuff, and uh, recycling of, of goods, purchasing goods, and all of that kind of stuff really does help well. The different uh, townsfolk that help you with uh, resources is are, are really valuable because you can only purchase one of those kinds of goods uh, when you buy goods. So uh, those other uh, townsfolk that give you goods that you don't have to pay for are really helpful throughout the course of the game. So if you get those, you pretty much have to take those uh, so that you can get those resources a little bit faster. Um, the player aid that comes where it has all of the different things that you need for each of the boats as far as the uh, kinds of craftsmen that you need and how many points they come for uh, is, is a good player aid to have. I thought they could have added a little bit more to the player aid, especially because the backside of the player aid is blank. They could have added a much more information on the backside of that, which would have made the player aid that much better. Uh, as it is, though, the, the player boards are well laid out. There's enough room on them to hold all of the things that they need to hold. Uh, the number of the the amount of space that each player needs isn't that much because you simply need a row of cards on the bottom, a row of cards on the top, and then enough room for buildings and tools on the side. So there isn't a huge footprint to the game either, which is also cool because sometimes you don't have those larger tables to play on. The component quality of the game is good. Uh, it isn't great, don't get me wrong, but it, it, it also isn't bad either. They all come with these, uh, you know, these meeples that have, you know, sheep and, and Viking meeples for uh, your workers and, and iron, and they're all wood. They're all very sturdy. Uh, they're not super great, but they're decent, and uh, so there's an even keel there. The amount of downtime in the game is pretty low, considering that your turns go pretty quickly. There's only a limited number of things that you can really do on your turn, uh, basically because of the cards that are in your hand. And sometimes, uh, because of the draft and you just didn't get the cards that you need, sometimes being able to do something is almost nil, and uh, that just happens. Rarely will it happen, because usually you can do something on your turn that will be beneficial to you, but uh, sometimes it happens, but turns go very quickly, so there's very little downtime. It does feel like the, the engine of the game is churning at a pretty good clip throughout, um, but having said that, I think the length of the game is probably a little bit longer, especially if you get half, uh, hate drafted a little bit in the earlier parts of the game. Um, it's a little longer than it needs to be, or it should be rather. Not by much. I wasn't dreading the end of the game or anything like that, but I did feel just a tinge of, you know, this could have been a couple of rounds, uh, ended a couple of rounds sooner, and I would have been good with that. So there is that. It has a variable number of turns because it's it's not dependent on a number of rounds. It's dependent upon somebody getting that fourth ship built. So that might take very short amount of time. That might take a longer amount of time. It just depends on how uh, the game goes with each player's resource management and so forth and so on. So my final thoughts on the game is that it is an okay game. Now, granted, this isn't really my kind of game. I don't really enjoy... Uh, it's just straight out resource management, hand management types of games. I don't mind those mechanics, but if that's all the game is offering, then it's it's pretty low on my totem pole. Um, all in all, I think this is probably about a six for me. It's it's not great, you know. Seven through ten is like that's like the uh, creme de la creme, I guess you could say. Six and lower is you're getting into that average. So fives and sixes for me, it's kind of an average game um, with the theme for this one bumping it up to a six for me, just because the artwork is phenomenally well done and they do provide a little bit of uh, a little pamphlet uh, on the artist, which I thought was a pretty cool thing in the game. So the artwork is good. I like the theme. So that takes a, a really average game for me, a five up to a six. So that's my final thoughts on Shipwrights of the North Sea by Garpill Games. 
Uh, I hope they've been clear for you. Let me know in the comments what you think, whether you agree or disagree with me, and uh, we'll see you guys on the flip side. <laughs>